One more day. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. exclusively on the WWE Network, we will see NXT Arrival live from Full Sail University, the first ever two-hour-long NXT Spectacular broadcast exclusively on the new WWE Network. This is a big deal, folks. It really is. And a huge feather in the cap for NXT as a promotion. Now, that's the reason you're getting this video today, 24 hours before the actual NXT Arrival event. I thought it was a good idea to throw it out now, given the fact that I already did a SmackDown recap over the weekend and I didn't put it on there, so I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about it the day before Arrival and give some speculation and talk about some potential matchups we're going to be seeing and the matchups we will be seeing tomorrow during the event. Now, unfortunately, I will not be able to watch this live, which means you're not going to get a, a write-up or recap right away. I don't know why I said write-up, but a recap right away because... AJ and I are going to be in non-stop, so obviously we had to make that as a sacrifice so we could see the movies, get the reviews out to you guys before, like, midnight on Friday, because obviously with the way that things upload now, it takes forever to upload videos. Thank you, iOS 7. I will tell you right now that there will be a recap, a video just like this one about, excuse me, NXT Arrival that will be coming out sometime later this week. I don't know what my schedule's going to be like this week. I know that we are in Oscar week, and it's really busy right now. So needless to say, there's a lot of things that are going down. So what I want to tell you real quick is I want to throw out a big shout-out real quick. A huge shout-out to my friend and soon-to-be fellow podcaster, Ashley Richardson. He is, of course, on the SNS Radio Network. And he has a podcast called Sticks and Flicks. Well, this podcast had me on as a special guest this past week. And we talked about the three different award shows that are coming up this coming week. Which, obviously, since we're in Oscar week, I can only be referring to the Independent Spirit Awards, the Golden Raspberries, and the Academy Awards themselves. And I had an amazing time, and I really enjoyed... Just chatting with Ashley and talking about my predictions that I gave you guys here on this channel. It's something that if you want to see it, you're more than welcome to. The address is rather long, and this is probably the time that I should be using an annotation. But as you learned a long time ago, I don't like annotations because they're annoying, especially with verses back when we used to do the categories. If you would like to check out the first ever podcast Sorrow and Disney was a part of, that surprise, surprise, is not about Disney and or wrestling, then you can go to the SNS Radio Network website. It's snsradionetwork.com backslash SNS dash sticks, just S-T-I-C-K-S, dash flicks, F-L-I-C-K-S, dash the date, which is 02-24-14, and then one more dash, and now dash archived backslash. I know it's a long address, folks, but it's a really enjoyable podcast, and I'm not just saying it to put myself over, or my friend Ashley over. I am saying it because if you want to hear about Oscar talk, or awards talk, or some of the weird things I said on this podcast... You are able to check this out, and you can go to that web address, and I will put a link in the description bar to said podcast if you want to just click on it and check it out. And also, while you're at it, check out the other shows on the SNS Radio Network. It's a really awesome entertainment-based website. They do podcasts weekly, and there's wrestling podcasts. There are entertainment podcasts, all sorts of different kind of podcasts. Check them out snsradionetwork.com Well, speaking of networks, it's interesting that I bring this up, and yes, folks, this is what we call a segue. Zero and Disney and Pop are now part of the Freedom Network, so we are now working with the Freedom Network, and we are, um, I don't know what this is going to do per se, but apparently that's just how it is now, so I thought that's pretty cool. I Hopefully we'll do some things, and maybe someday... You never know, maybe Sir Owen Disney will make a little bank from these YouTube videos. Probably not, but still, 
It's not about making money for me, it's about entertaining my viewers, you all out there right now. So, I appreciate you guys continuing to watch these videos, and I continue giving you amazing content that you guys seem to absolutely enjoy, or you wouldn't watch it anyway. I do know there are a lot of people that love this channel and want to see it continue and succeed just like it has been, and I will continue to make videos forever and a day. So... Thanks again, I wanted to say that real quick. Now, um, I hate to end the uh, housekeeping on a sad note, but unfortunately I have to. Real quick. I got this can of Minute Maid Fruit Punch that I'm drinking right now. And I got it just so I would not have a parched throat talking about the matches that I'm going to talk about in the NXT recap in a few minutes. But, in the midst of this, I'll shoot with you guys. I'll throw myself under the bus. This is probably like my seventh take. Because I haven't liked how they've turned out. Now, I know what you're asking. I know what you're saying right now to yourself. Oh, and if you edited, then maybe you wouldn't have to do so many takes. My response is, yeah, I know, but still, that's another thing about this channel. Basically, it's all about one take, and if you screw up, then you're done. So, um, that's pretty much what I'm doing now. I want to talk about a couple of bad things that happened lately. And no, I'm not talking about stuff that happened to myself. We're not going to talk about that here because we don't discuss those things here. What I want to talk about real quick is, like I said, I worked today. wasn't planning on working today, but I worked anyway, so I got more money. More money is a good thing because that means I get to pay off things faster. So that's a good thing altogether. Now, I want to end this housekeeping with um, a little solemn information that I'm not really happy to talk about. I will say right now that the world has lost a couple of people since we last talked to you guys and they're in the world of entertainment one of which wrestling fans you're definitely going to know and the other which everyone should know so i want to say that recently nelson fraser jr passed away and for those of you that don't know who i'm referring to he was viscera or king mabel or big daddy v and i had the pleasure of working my very first professional wrestling show with him and I actually got to talk to him for a couple of minutes and this was way before Sir Owen this was way before I even ran music or was a ring announcer or a manager or competed in a match this was back in the day when I was a senior in high school and wrestling came to my high school and they let me set up chairs so it was the first time I actually worked a show and I talked to Nelson for a minute. He's a really nice guy. He really was. And he will definitely be missed. Now, another one that was really hit me hard huge was the fact that Harold Ramis passed away. And for those of you that don't know who I'm talking about, uh, fans would know him as Egon Spengler from the uh, Ghostbusters. And, of course, he was a writer-director. And he's done a lot of tremendous movies, like, Groundhog Day and Stripes and he was on Second City Television which is something I really enjoyed. I love SCTV. It was really good. I remember it was the Canadian equivalent to Saturday Night Live basically. He has a lot of great stuff there. It is a shame to me that the last thing that he really did as a writer-director was a really horrid film called Year One that I always stuck to the claim that he didn't actually write it and made me feel better. So... But yeah, he did a lot of good movies I really enjoyed. He did Vacation and Airheads, which I absolutely love. Um, remember, there's a line there that I always love. It's like, who would you take in the battle, Van Halen, Van Halen or David Lee Roth? And he said Van Halen, Joe Montaigne. He says he's a cop. He's like, no, no, give me one more chance. And then, of course, the, the line that we've heard so many times... That, I'm going to paraphrase it obviously because it's me we're talking about here. It's like, who wouldn't win in a wrestling match, Lemmy or God? And then he says, Lemmy. And he's like, eh. And he says, God. He's like, nah. And then, of course, Buscemi says, trick question, Lemmy is God. And they kicked him out. So, yeah, I always loved Harold Ramis in that role. And it was really awesome. He was in As Good As It Gets. He was in Orange County, a really underrated film I enjoyed. He was in Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox movie. And uh, also Knocked Up as well. So... Yeah, he did a lot of really awesome roles. And it is a shame that this Ghostbusters 3 that we heard all about will have to go ahead without 
Egon Spengler being part of it, which is going to suck. So I will say right now that in tribute, in the best way I possibly can, I'm going to do something I don't normally do on here. And since this is an NXT video and these are these housekeepings are kind of hodgepodges, I'm going to throw something out to you I've never done before. I'm going to tell you what a versus is going to be. Now, don't get excited because the versus for this week, for Oscar Sunday, is going to be a surprise. But if you think of the word Oscar, spelled K-A-R, not C-A-R, you know exactly what movie I'm referring to. And you just got to figure out what's going up against it. But, yeah, we are going to do a versus so we could talk about the career of Harold Ramis. And we are definitely doing something that was said a long time ago. We've never really understood why, but... And we'll talk about it when we actually do the verses. But Cisco and Ebert a long time ago compared two movies. And that's all I'm going to say. I, I'm going to say that we are doing Ghostbusters as a versus. But unless you know your really obscure Cisco and Ebert trivia, you're not going to know what movie's going up against it. But think about it. So that's coming. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday. The second Sunday in March is going to be a Ghostbusters versus. So we're looking forward to that. It's not going to be Ghostbusters versus Ghostbusters 2. It's a little bit one-sided, so we're not going to do that. We're going to put Ghostbusters up against something else. Paranormal. We'll go with that. And don't think we're going to go against anything that they call paranormal now. No. Something you know what I'm talking about. Definitely ghosts will be busted. We'll just put it that way. So that being said, real quick, like I said, I wanted to make that little comment before, and don't worry, we'll go we'll go into Harold Ramis's career when we talk about Ghostbusters in the verses. So I promise you that. That being said, we're gonna come here to talk NXT, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we started off the show this week with the Ascension. They have been the NXT Tag Team Champions for 140 days. 140 days without much competition, with the exception of the match with Unico and Camacho and the match against Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards. You know, the one that they didn't get a job because of? They've been facing a bunch of uh, enhancement talent. I'll be nice. So, they battled off against a team called... Well, Casey Marion and Like Mike Lebowska. Yep, that's it. That's all we knew. Whip tag to Connor. Double elevator down. Tag into Victor. Fall of Man. That's the end of it. They really need to get the Ascension real, real competition. Now, the rumor is that the New Age Outlaws are going to be in attendance for Arrival tomorrow. And there is another rumor that the Outlaws will be facing the Ascension. I wouldn't have an issue doing champion versus champion. Obviously, neither title will be on the line. But it would be a nice rub for the Ascension to get in the ring with an actual tag team that, you know, fights back. The thing about it is, is NXT had an awesome tag team division. One by one, they either split or just bombed out. I would say this would be the time to bring the Wyatts back, but... There's no reason to do that now. I said the primetime players, they split them. I said the Usos, they're getting pushed. Not going to happen. Maybe Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes before they split them up? That's not a bad idea. I think it actually would work, to be totally honest. Wouldn't have a problem with that. Tons of fun. Split that. Make Tensai a commentator. NXT doesn't have any tag teams. They don't. They are kind of like what some promotions have been from time to time throughout history. They have tag team champions, but they don't have a tag team division. NXT needs to remedy this immediately. And it doesn't matter who it is at this point. They just need to build tag teams. And then the Ascension would be more than just coming out, squashing jobbers every week, and adding another day to their title reign. I don't mind the Ascension. I'd be interested to see when they come up to the main roster. I think the Ascension feuding with the Wyatt family is actually going to be an awesome feud if they actually do it right. But who knows where we're going to go with this. 
right now the Ascension pretty much don't have any competition. So this is the time WWE needs to start bringing in their talent to fight the Ascension to build up their credibility. If not, might as well just abolish the tag team division because they're not doing anything with it right now. I don't want that to happen, but it may be something you have to do unless you're not going to have a tag team division, and that's a shame right now. So our next match is a match that I talked about. This is the actual match of the rematch I talked about on the Raw recap last night. Roundabout way to say this is Emma and Summer Rae. And of course, the finish is not the same. Well, the finish overall is the same. The way we got to it was different this time around. Obviously, Emma won on Raw last night. And the thing about it, well, when we talked about it two nights ago, and we talked about it last night. So, Emma won, and obviously, Emma was going to win because she is finally getting a title opportunity to take the NXT Women's Championship from Paige. And obviously, you have to build up her credibility, so her beating Summer Rae twice in one week, that's not a bad thing, considering the fact that Summer Rae is the uncrowned queen of NXT. So, we get this match, and we go midway through the match, like we do here on Pop, Full Nelson body scissors by Summer Rae, and Emma bridges back, one, two, and Summer kicks out, so she goes right back to the move. Summer rolls Emma on her shoulders, one, two, and a kick out, and she has Emma across the ropes, and she uses her neck as a ballet, like, as a, like, a, a ballet beam, and she does a demi play over it. I like what she does that it actually over, over with me. Next snap on the middle rope, and a back kick drops Summer. Makes a cover, one, two, and a kick out. Chin lock, and she arm drags her way out, which is interesting. Whip in, charges in, misses, and the dilemma is set up, and she breaks it four. So, Emma Sandwich in the corner, and basically Sasha gets up on the ring apron, Actually, at this point, she is, like, leaning over the ropes on the apron right now. There you go. That's what I'm looking at. And Sasha basically slaps her in the face. Roll up from behind on Emma. One, two, and a kick out. Comes off the ropes. Sasha's on the apron this time. She gets shoved off. Knocked off the ring apron. Double leg. Emma lock. And summer taps. So, that's the end of this. Basically, just used to build up Emma in her quest to win the NXT Women's Championship, which I'm almost guaranteeing she'll do tomorrow. So, mm, Emma's dancing in the back, and she's getting her title shot finally against Paige. But before she gets in the ring with Paige, she wants to have a face-to-face -face with her, and that's what's going to happen tomorrow, before the match. You should see where we go with that. Especially if they end up turning Paige heel, which wouldn't surprise me at this, ish, at this point. I know that Arrival, by and large, looks like it's going to be, at least on the surface, an event that you get the titles off who has them currently. I don't necessarily think that's the case. Especially with Emma going to SmackDown with Santino, doing the storyline with Fandango and Summer Rae. I don't know. I think there might be money to be made if Paige turns heel here. I really do. I think that might be the right direction. Not joining the BFFs or anything like that. I mean, a heel on her end right. But then again, the only baby face that could take the title off of Paige in that case would be Bailey. And I like Bailey, but I don't think she's necessarily ready for that kind of a rub yet. So we get Renee Young backstage with Sami Zayn and Cesaro. And this is a one on one interview. Obviously, there's a couple caveats here, but I'll get to that in a minute. So, Zink wants to congratulate Cesaro on getting in the Elimination Chamber. Renee basically says that there are some rules involved in this interview. If Cesaro gets touched in any way, Sami Zayn will not be allowed to have any more NXT Championship opportunities. That being said, also, if Cesaro touches Sami Zayn, then Cesaro is taken out of the Elimination Chamber. So, they both have a lot to lose if they touch each other. Cesaro so interrupts Sammy over and over again. He basically says he has an Achilles heel, and that's his knee, obviously. He asks repeatedly if Sammy's going to be medically cleared to compete. Sammy says he'll be ready by February 27th. Mm, excuse me. Which is tomorrow. And Cesaro, during this entire time that Sammy's trying to talk, he is texting and smirking. Interesting. Sammy stands up. He says, this is past personal. 
It's professional now. It's interesting. I thought it was the other way around. You are the only thing standing in my way in advancing my career. After February 27th, you will have nothing to say left at all. This right here is the feud in NXT, and it should be. And you know, I will say right now, something that will probably be like, oh, and you're crazy for saying this. No, I'm really not. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think Sami Zayn wins tomorrow. I think he should win tomorrow. Now, could there be interference by Jack Swagger that causes more rifts between the real Americans? Could happen, possibly. Swagger's been in NXT before. It's a possibility. Or, Cesaro loses, because this is the rubber match, mind you. Obviously, Sami Zayn won the first, and then the two out of three falls, the match that I've seen the last two days, thank you, WWE Network, in its entirety, with different commentary for some odd reason. That was the second match that Cesaro won. And then we've got this was the rubber match. Well, Zayn needs to win this. And what furthermore needs to happen is Bo Dallas needs to retain. Don't know how he retains, but he needs to retain tomorrow. The reason why Bo Dallas needs to retain? No offense to Adrian Neville, and it wouldn't surprise me if they put the title on him tomorrow, but here's what I would do in this situation. I think that there is money to be made in the storyline that never got a rational conclusion. I think that Bo Dallas retains tomorrow, ticks everyone off. Sami Zayn, who just beat Antonio Cesaro clean in the center of the ring, comes out after the match is over and says, you can't duck me anymore. I've earned my opportunity. I want you for the NXT Championship. And that is what happens. We finally get the resolve to Sami Zayn and Bo Dallas with Sami Zayn walking out, becoming the fourth NXT champion in promotion history. And that is how it should go. Another option on this is maybe Oliver Gray comes out and maybe he, we do the Motor City Machine Gun Steez and he costs his former tag team partner in British Ambition, the NXT Championship. He's about ready to grab the title, and Bo Dallas is down. Oliver Gray runs out, shoves the ladder over. Bo Dallas still wins, and we have ignited a feud between Oliver Gray and Adrian Neville. I wouldn't have an issue with that either. I think that's also a direction you possibly could go. We're not even to that yet. Speaking of Adrian Neville, he's in the main event for the evening, and he's facing off against somebody that I really enjoy, and that's Tyler Breeze. I really like the Tyler Breeze gimmick. It's amazing. So we go midway through the match, there's a missile drop kick on Tyler, 1-2 and a kick out, and Neville gets caught with a jawbreaker, ducks the clothesline, and a Rana gets caught, picked up, sit-out powerbomb by Adrian Neville, 1-2 and a kick out, springboards off, gets caught with a huge forearm, springboard fake out, drop kick, misses, comes off the ropes, Tyler with a super kick, 1-2 and Neville kicks out. So he goes for the beauty shot, Neville ducks out of the way, Insigiri kick, step up Insigiri kick in the corner, and Red Arrow, one, two, three, and Adrian Neville wins this match, which basically is just his warm up match for the match against Bo Dallas, which is the first ever NXT ladder match tomorrow at Arrival. Speaking of that, Neville grabs the mic and goes to speak. Bo Dallas comes out for an interruption. No more Bo chance, of course, start, because the crowd really loved Bo Dallas. He really is the John Cena of NXT. You've come so far, you'll be facing me. That's huge. Climbing ladder to success, you've gone as far as you can. Of course, he realizes he made a pun there, and he laughs at himself. He says, I have no intentions of losing at a rival. So, Neville says, I thought you hated me, and Bo says, no, I think you're a good kid. I realize that you're scared of me, Neville says. So, Bo basically... Just stands there. He's like, what? No, I'm not scared of you. He's like, you're scared I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to climb that ladder and I'm going to leave the NXT champion. Your eyes don't smile. Mm, excuse me. You want to hit me. I'll give you one shot right here, right now. Open season. Choice is yours. So apparently he's now Jigsaw. So he drops the mic. Takes off his jacket, Bo's about to attack, and he backs off and leaves. That's how we go home on the NXT Arrival Go Home Edition of NXT. So, let's talk about Arrival tomorrow, shall we? 
But first, before we get started, I will say if you want to check out anything on this show, uh, check out Adrian Neville and Tyler Breeze. It's a good main event. And I would check out the sit-down interview with Sami Zayn and Cesaro. But it's also on the end of the This Is NXT special on the WWE Network. It's on the very end. Like, right after the 2 out of 3 falls match, they, like, tacked it on at the end. So it's not exactly the same thing that was aired on NXT a couple months ago. It was pretty much added with the 2 out of 3 falls match in uh, intact, of course. Summer Rae and Emma put on a good match, as normal, and... I mean, I'd skip the opening match with the Ascension, unless you're a big Ascension mark, which is... I have an issue if you are. Let's talk about Arrival now, shall we? Before we uh, end this video rather abruptly. It's going to be a short one, it looks like. So, we have three matches that are listed for a two-hour event. The main event, NXT Championship on the line, Bo Dallas defending against the man that gravity forgot, Adrian Neville. I've already talked about what I think should happen in this match. When it comes down to it, no matter how you slice it, any of the ways I mentioned earlier, Bo Dallas will retain. I know you're probably thinking, oh, Neville's going to win. Bo Dallas will retain. Second, Paige defending the NXT Women's Championship against Emma. There's a lot of direction you can go with this. Signs point to the fact that Emma's going to win this and win the championship. But I think at this point, this may not be the last match between the two. Obviously, they had the tournament final to determine who the first women's champion was, and Paige went over. This is the chance for Emma to get her heat back. The thing about that is, Emma's not a heel, number one, and Emma's got kind of an issue going on with Summer Rae on SmackDown. What I think here, I think Summer Rae and the BFFs cost Emma the championship. So I think Paige retains. And... Which is interesting because, like I said, it seems like Arrival was to arrive the brand new champions, but not in this case. So, the next match is the big one. The third, the rubber match in the colossal series between the former El Generico and the former Claudio Castagnoli. Cesaro against Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn has to win this match, and after he wins, he needs to immediately challenge Bo Dallas to put his money where his mouth is. He beat Cesaro clean in the ring, and now he wants his rightful opportunity. I think Triple H comes out, and I think they make the match soon. The next big NXT Super Show, which I think will happen before the year's over. I think it's probably going to be, if I had to guess, I'd say around summer, if I had to really put a time frame on it. I think we'll get more NXT two-hour specials in the next coming months, given the fact that it's an exclusive on the WWE Network now, so I think it's still maybe on Hulu or Hulu Plus, I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out soon. Can't find out today, because obviously if you look at it today, this event that we're going to be seeing tomorrow, NXT Arrival, is a live event, so obviously NXT has to be from the one I'm talking about right now, so that's not going to happen. Other things that we'd see on the show. Obviously, we have a storyline that has been going on lately between the artiste, Aiden English, and big cast, Colin Cassidy. I think that's going to continue. Where's Tyler Breeze fit in all this? Uh, Corey Graves, where does he fit in all this? I don't like Mo Mojo Raleigh very much, but I really haven't seen much of him, so who knows. Are we going to debut, like, Solomon Crow on this show, potentially? I mean, is there going to be anything with, like, Marcus Jordan? Or is there going to be anything with the Legionnaires or Mason Ryan or... There's a lot of talent that needs to be focused on the show. Bailey, Bailey needs to be a part of this. The other BFF, Sasha Banks and Charlotte, are they going to be a part of this? What WWE superstars are going to be a part of this? I know for a fact that the Outlaws are supposed to be there, so I'm going to think they're going to do a champion versus champion match against the Ascension. And if that happens, I think the Ascension win by DQ or something like that. So the Ascension and basically get the win, but they're not going to get the pinfall. I don't think they'll job out the Outlaws twice in one week because, don't forget, the Outlaws jobbed like insane in a minute to the Usos on Raw two days ago. So, yeah, there's always that. But either way, it's going to be really awesome to see, and I'm really looking forward to this edition of NXT, given the fact it's a two-hour special. There's a lot to really introduce people into. Who knows, maybe we might see stuff from... C.J. Parker. I mean, C.J. Parker just basically turned heel, so obviously he'll probably be a part of the show. Enzo Amore can't wrestle right now, but I'm sure he'll cut a promo of some sort, because he is awesome. 
and all the other amazing NXT superstars will be focused on as well, including probably people you haven't seen yet. So, a lot of things will be interesting to see what happens with this special and how it goes into anything. I think if NXT is going to become a regular program on the WWE Network, I think it's time to institute a new championship. Now, on my WWE 2K14, I have I just took the internet championship and gave it to uh, Tyler Breeze. So there. But, really, I think it's time to do a new singles championship. I think we need a television title of some sort for there to be for people to compete for that are not necessarily in the main event yet, or not upper mid-carder yet. They're kind of just kind of on the cusp. They're not really ready yet. I think that's a good idea at this point. And I think we focus more on the women's division, which is actually really good, and a really good talent in that women's division, unless they end up on Raw and SmackDown, which of course is the end game anyway. So, go watch NXT Arrival, and uh, let me know what you thought of it. So, I will be recapping that later. We'll be talking SmackDown later this week. Of course, we've got the Spirit Awards on Saturday, the Academy Awards on Sunday, brand new verses coming this Sunday, Oscar, O-S-K-A-R themed verses. And we've got AJ's movie reviews this week, Son of God, and Nonstop will be talked about. And we've got a lot of great stuff here on Pop that you can check out very soon. A lot of new content, new, like I said, new podcasts are coming, actually joining Pop soon. And Will will probably make his return to the channel, Ben will probably make his return to the channel. So that is something to look forward to. It's going to be a great year for 2014 here on Pop. So... Go watch NXT Arrival any way you can, and enjoy the show. It's going to be really awesome. In the meantime, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them, leave a comment, do subscribe, and help spread the word about Pop. If you'd like to like our Facebook fan page, which I, I, I promise I'll start updating sooner rather than later, it's Suro and Disney Pop on Facebook. If you want to go old school on Facebook, you can friend me. It's Owen Disney. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Soro and Disney. Last but certainly not least, if you want to send your thoughts, comments, queries, and opinions about things you'd like to see on Pop versus ideas, wrestling matches you'd like to see me call, and other things all around the spectrum, Disney, Universal, wrestling, anything you want to talk about, movies, music, anything, just send me an email, Disney at gmail.com. In the meantime, thank you guys and girls out there for watching, and until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all i got to say about that.